Hi friends, uh, good evening. Welcome everyone for today's session on Form FCGPR, uh, Procedure for Filing and the Practical Issues in Volvi Felt. This topic was quite uh, relevant as to everyone would know as to what FCGPR is, but more focus uh, on uh, today's session would be on the practical issues involved, like what are the reasons for rejections, what is exactly the requirement of the AD bank when when we do this filing and what are the complications involved, everything. So uh, let's get started, uh, friends. Before that, I would like to acknowledge the effort of Subarsh for preparing this PPT. The legends used, uh, AD uh, refers to authorized dealer, BU, business user, CCPS, compulsory convertible preferences, CCD, compulsory convertible debentures, FCGPR, foreign currency, uh, gross provisional return in the full form, FCNR account, uh, uh, foreign currency non-resident account, FIRMS, uh, foreign investment reporting and management system. So this is one uh, centralized system which the RBI has uh, started for the purpose of filing the various forms which are required under uh, FEMA and RBI. FIRC, foreign inward remittance certificate, KYC, know your customer, MOA, a memorandum of association, NRE account, non-resident rupee account, SMF, single master form. The schema for the evening, um, what exactly is form FCGPR, the single master form, registration in firm's uh, website, registration as entity user and as a business user, the structure of form, what are the content uh, uh, which needs to be filled in while filing the form FCGPR, uh, foreign various details which are required, that the entity details, issue details, foreign investor details, amount of issue, what are the documents required to be uploaded along with the form, uh, the certification required, the reasons for rejection of form, as I mentioned, uh, the case studies, couple of case studies to uh, understand more or practically as to how this filing has to happen, technical points and uh, uh, penalties uh, in case of or late filing within case of non-compliance. FCGPR, again, it's a form filed by an Indian company issuing equity instruments to a person resident outside India. Filed where such event is rec uh, reckoned as, uh, where such issue is reckoned as FDI. So in case there is an FDI into an Indian company, uh, form FCGPR is mandatory within 30 days from the date of issue of equity in instruments. So the, uh, within 30 days, it has to be uh, reported to RBI. Uh, as per non-debt instrument rules 2019, FDI means the following, that is investment through equ equity instruments by a person as an outside in an unlisted company or in 10% or more of the post issue paid up equity capital on a fully diluted basis of a listed Indian company. So in case there is no restriction on the shareholding in an unlisted Indian company, but in case it's a listed company, then 10% or more of the post issue paid up equity capital on a full diluted basis. Full diluted basis meaning uh, the total number of shares that would be outstanding if all possible sources of conversions are exercised. So, uh, for example, as of today or uh, post this issue, um, there are equity shares and there are CCPS or CCDs as well. What would be the number of shares if these CCPS and CCD are converted uh, as on uh, as on the date of reckoning? So that also should be considered that uh, if it is 10 percent or more, it would be regarded as FDI. Single master form and registration in firms portal. Um, single master form is a form introduced by RBI for, with the objective of integrating the extant reporting structures of various types of foreign investment in India. SMF, that is again a single master form, which was effectively introduced in 2018, is a consolidation of nine forms, uh, amongst which one is FCGPR. The nine forms are FCGPR, LLP1, LLP2, CN form, DRR form. INV1, uh, INV1 form, FCTRS, uh, ESOP form, DI form, our focus would be on the FCGPR. For uh, filing uh, FCGPR, a firm has to register himself, a firm or an entity has to register himself as an entity user as well as business user. So what are these uh, uh, registrations? Let us see, friends. To file the forms integrated by SMF, an entity has to be registered in firm's portal. Uh, Steps for registration, registration as a entity user. The first registration has to be uh, as an entity user. An entity can have only one EU. 
So entity user would be the sole person authorized to add, update the foreign investment details of an entity in the entity master and would be entirely responsible for the data ended. So maybe we can consider a, a director of a company that an entity can have only one EU. So he will be a single person who can represent company for filing of these forms. Register uh, as a business user. So after entity user, um, um, there has to be registration uh, taken in, in the form of business user. Business user is the applicant reporting the transaction in single master format forms. A BU can use his login credentials for only the entity that has authorized him to report the transaction. The person wants to act as a BU for another entity, he may register himself separately. A BU can be registered in forms for an entity only after entity master is created for that entity by the EU. So it would be like, um, again, uh, a person who is filing the form. So entity user friends who is representing the, uh, the, the form or an entity. Business user, you can uh, consider the person who is uh, filing the forms on behalf of uh, the entity. As it is mentioned, uh, if the person wants to act as a BU for another entity, he must register himself separately. So there can be multiple um, BUs, not for an entity, for different entity, different BUs, yes, uh, or say for different entity, there can be same BU, but an entity will have only one EU, that is entity user. Hope this is uh, clear, friends. Register as entity user informed that this is what is the uh, the portal looks like when we go for uh, entity user uh, registration. For this purpose, a letter authorizing a person, generally a director as entity, has to be uploaded in the RBA prescribed format. This prescribed format is available in the firm's website itself. The authorization cannot be signed by the person nominated by the company. It should be signed by another person. So, say for example. There are two directors, so the person, one director is, is, is being regarded as the entity user for, a, for an entity. He cannot authorize him, he or she cannot authorize himself. There has to be another director who needs to authorize uh, the entity user. A self assisted copy of PAN, a PAN card copy of entity user should be attached. After registration, registering as entity user, the entity shareholding pattern and foreign investment shall, uh, investment shall be updated. Step two, after you are registering the entity user, there comes a, a registration of BU, that is business user. It's the same, the procedure is same as what we saw for entity user. For this purpose, as well as an authorization letter from the company authorizing a person to register as business user. Again, a person who is registering uh, himself as a business user for entity, he cannot, he or she cannot uh, authorize authorize himself there has to be another person who are authorizing that person self-attested copy of pan card is required the entity user can also be the business user of the entity or it can be even a different person as i mentioned friends the entity user can be a business user uh, i mean both eu as well as bu can be uh, a same uh, there is no restriction that both has to be different Time limit for approval of entity user and business user application is generally 48 hours each. So it takes around two to working days to, to register yourself as EU. So once the, the portal is simple, but uh, the author or the approval from the RBI for uh, EU as well as BU would be uh, would take generally two to working days. When the application is rejected, it can be resubmitted after rectifying the qualifications. Once approved, a one-time password is sent to the registered email ID of the user. The password can to be can be changed by the entity. So with that uh, user ID password, you can go and uh, file your form FCGPR. There's a query, friends. Um, a company incorporated in 2015 by a, a resident and not whether the bank account is not open so far. Now we want to file the returns by opting um, CFSS. My question are as follows, uh, whether the non can bring his portion of uh, share amount through FDI, deposit rules uh, will apply or not as per company as the amount had not received so far. Uh, can you just confirm what is the full form or what do you mean by CFSS?
it will will proceed with our preparation and stuff filing uh, fcgpr structure of uh, form fcgpr it is entity details issue details foreign investor details amount of issue particular of issue and scheduling pattern once you fill in the first three data automatically the last three the amount of issue particular of issue and scheduling pattern gets auto populated Uh, Rather can just confirm uh, by opting CFSS. Uh, what do you mean? In the entity details, the snapshot uh, again available. Uh, details to be entered uh, whether the investment is through automatic or approval route. Uh, so we need to mention whether it is the sector in which the FDI has happened, or the industry or the business whether it is allowed under automatic or approval route. Applicable sectoral cap. So how much is the ceiling? Like say 49, 26, 49, 17 per 400. as the case may whether the foreign investment is received for a specific project or manufacturing unit or uh, manufacturing plant if that is the case that, that needs to be mentioned issue details uh, the date of issue date on which the equity instruments have been allotted to persons resident outside you know, that is the date of allotment So it is, as it is said, uh, 30 days uh, from uh, the date of uh, issue the for issue of share the form FCGPR needs to be filed. Nature of issue whether it was a preferential allotment, private placement or arrangement, rights issue or bonus issue, merger, demerger, amalgamation, subscription to MOA, conversion of convertible notes issue of FV, uh, FVCI, share the issue on exercise of ESOP issue of sweat equity shares. Participating interests or rights in oil fields, others. So we need to mention uh, uh, under which category the issue is. Uh, issue of shares is initial FCGPR reference number applicable where shares are partly paid and filed as form is filed as as and when the remittance is received. So for for example, up up ten rupees and up uh, for against the ten rupees, four rupees were were invested by the non-resident earlier, and now uh, another two rupees have been uh, received and we need to issue uh, accordingly uh, report that transaction in that scenario the erstwhile fcgpr number reference number for when the filing happened for the 4 rupees that needs to be mentioned okay so the query is company incorporated in 2015 by a resident and a non resident with the bank account is not open so far now we want to file the returns by opting cfss my question are as follows whether the cfss meaning company fresh settlement scheme Uh, whether the non-resident can bring his portion of share amount through FDI. Second, deposit rules will apply or not as per the Company Act, as the amount has not received uh, so far. So, uh, Raghav, 2015, the company was incorporated. Obviously, the allotment of shares also would have happened. The presumed allotment also happened, and we would have done the required filings in uh, Company Act. So now, that being the case, when shares are being allowed, uh, we need to report that to. RBI. So, RBI is because of non-filing. RBI is not aware as to uh, shares are being issued to this non-resident. So, um, yes, there is a non-compliance. But uh, uh, yes, uh, there is, as you said, there is something called company fresh settlement scheme. Whether our case would fall under that, or uh, whether we can opt uh, any uh, benefit under the scheme, I need to get back on that. I can certainly, maybe you can mail me. Uh, the the queries I'll revert to you as to whether our case would fall fall under the ambit of CFSS or not, and or whether uh, there is another option of compounding. Maybe like that is that is again one option wherein like we can approach RBI voluntarily and say that there has been a non-compliance and we need to uh, do the compliance now. So we we can go for that uh, if our case is falling within the company fresh settlement scheme. I'll I'll get back to you. After doing the required checks, second point: uh, the deposit rules will apply or not as per company that as the amount had not been received so far. Even uh, on that as well, uh, because the today's focus was on FCGPR, so on both our query. If you can just give me the whether again we can fill, but again what will happen is once we file, certainly after filing FCGPR now. There is no restriction. You can file, but you are. In, I mean, we will invite attention of uh, uh, the regulators, the AD Bank, and certainly there will be a, a notice which would be issued 
for the purpose of non compliance so late filing we'll see the amount is three times of the amount of contravention so whatever is the amount three times we need to pay the late filing so if that is fine for the client or if they are okay paying that we can still go but uh, uh, i would just need require more facts as to why there was a delay whether the, the reasons were genuine reasons because it's been like five years you said 2015 the company got incorporated so we can take this uh, matter offline and get more details as to what were the reasons for delay whether there was any genuine delay or it was only a, a lapse from the company's end and we need to see that because if at all we are filing fcgpr as i said the moment we file and we are uh, inviting attention of uh, uh, the regulators and also the amount involved would be would be again a very uh, important question as to what is the amount involved whether uh, that is very high wherein like companies okay paying the penalty on that or is fine uh, uh, making the uh, uh, approach through compounding we need to see those aspects uh, we can certainly connect offline uh, raghav if you can mail your detailed query along with uh, the exact facts uh, to to rid research at dvca.com we can certainly revert on that after doing the necessary checks also on your second point deposit rules uh, yes that can be done i mean that also would be uh, uh, clarified if you if you can mail me So coming back, friends, uh, NTT details, we have seen issue details, we have seen in issue details, whether there are change in the shareholding pattern due to this transaction being reported has already been accounted in the pre-transaction shareholding pattern. Yes or no. So this is one question which has been asked uh, while filing the issue details, whether the change in the shareholding pattern due to this transaction being reported has already been accounted in the pre-transaction shareholding pattern or not. We need to select whether yes or no. So for that, the, the implications in case where the company or LP is making a filing in SMF for a past transaction, which was not reported earlier, but the same has been included in the shareholding pattern provided in the entity master. At the time of reporting the same in SMF, the shareholding pattern should not change. So please be clear, please be uh, clear friends. In case where the company or LP is making, I'll repeat, in case the company or LP is making a filing in SMS for a past transaction which was not reported. So we have not done the reporting, but uh, uh, earlier now we are doing the uh, filing in SMF. But the same has been included in the shareholding pattern provided in the entity master. At the time of reporting the same in S SMF, the shareholding pattern should not change. In such a scenario, the business user where he is asked to specify whether the change he should select yes. The answer for that question would be yes in, in this scenario. This would ensure that the shareholding pattern is not affected again due to the due to the reporting in FCGPR. Where the transaction is being reported for the first time in SMS, that is a single master form, then no should be selected in which case the shareholding pattern as reported in the entity master would increase to reflect the current shareholding pattern. So hope uh, there is clarity on when we have to select yes and when we have to select no. Going forward, the foreign investor details, the number of investors, general details of the investors, the name, address, the country of residence, uh, country of residence. On the constitution front, where the investor is a company, constitution is to be mentioned at others, and the type of company is to be mentioned in the additional field provided after selecting others. So if it was a company, there is no specific uh, uh, detail provided or under the uh, tab the options provide are not labels you need to select others and then mention in the additional field which gets unleashed by selecting uh, uh, others we need to mention company particulars of issue type of capital instrument whether it is an equity debt ccps ccd warrants etc number of instruments face value premium issue price we need to mention that mode of payment that is the name of the ad bank from where the amount has been received mode of payment whether it's an invert remittance whether it is a debit to NRE account or FC or NR account or swap of instruments or others. If others, then we need to specify whether the remitter is different from foreign investor. If yes, uh, uh, the name and country of remitter and relationship between remitter and foreign investor. If no relationship, specify no relationship. This we'll see later friends in the case study. We had a practical uh, issue in, in this regard. We'll 
we'll discuss uh, in subsequent slides investment details again it is auto uh, auto filled as per the details entered above there's a query again uh, in case the uh, the share allotted to a non resident but share allotment money was transferred from indian bank account uh, will it attract fcgpr filing requirements yes uh, asta uh, the, the it's it's nowhere said that uh, the amount is being received from uh, an indian account of non residents so no fcgpr it only says to a person resident outside india so if shares are issued uh, to a person resident of outside india yes fcgpr would would get attracted or the filing would be mandatory amount of issue particulars of issue uh, these tabs are auto auto populated as per details entered in the previous tab as whatever as i said friends if you if, uh, provide the first three details that is entity user uh, entity details issue details and foreign investor details automatically these details gets auto populated the amount of issue and the particular of issue documents required so what are the various documents required while filing fcgpr documents to be attached in the foreign the, the, the third tab that is foreign investor details tabs under mode of payment if mode of payment is inward remittance from abroad through banking channels firc and kyc of remitter it is obtained from the ad bank so ad bank while uh, remitting on behalf of non resident uh, it will provide uh, the kyc again there is it's kyc meaning there is a specific format of uh, the ad bank it cannot be an uh, our own format where payments have been made in different dates that multiple firc shall be consolidated and attached as a single document and the first firc number should be mentioned in the form so if there are like uh, various tranches of payments say three tranches all should be consolidated and uploaded as a one document but the firc number should be of the the first remittance which was made if at all it is the mode of payment is through nre or fcnr account debit statement from bank through escrow account debit statement and firc swap of instruments evaluation certificate in the letter head of valuer issue of equity against funds payable to foreign investors relevant approvals from rbi or government of india and other related documents multiple mode of payments uh, the multiple modes are to be specified and documents required so if there are multiple modes then uh, whatever uh, documents required against each mode all the modes as well as all the documents are required to be attached in case of a payment for instruments are made by a person other than the investor the following additional documents are required kyc of remitter in the rbi prescribed format noc from remitter for making payment on behalf of investor board resolution for allocating the payment received from remitter against consideration payable by investor letter from in, uh, from investor stating the reasons for another person making payment on behalf of investor uh, will will uh, address this issue in the practice in the practical case study friends we have a case study in our hand for this and how it was resolved in case amount received is in excess of the consideration payable the applicant has to submit a declaration that excess amount has already been refunded or would be refunded or be would be utilized for further permissible transactions or has already been utilized in previous transaction the same however we should form so there's a, a declaration required in case amount received is in excess of the consideration payable either it would be either it has been refunded or it would be refunded or it would be used for permissible transactions and no other transaction so that declaration has been uh, is required and has to be uploaded in other attachments documents required subject to the nature of issue instruments issued in pursuance to scheme of merger merger amalgamation relevant approvals from the competent authority subscription to moa the copy of moa and board resolution for allotment friends an important note here date of allotment would usually be the date of passing board for allotment of shares but in case of subscription to moa it is generally not a practice to pass board resolution it is important that a board resolution is passed when shares are subscribed to moa by non resident for the purpose of filing fcgpr friends uh, the company will see again this in the uh, in the another case study which we have uh, uh, prepared for, for 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 addressing this issue as to what can be the uh, uh, and what are the implication or importance of board resolution uh, in the entire gamut of filing fcgpr mm -hmm. conversion of convertible notes identification or reference number of form uh, uh, cn filed in smf where form uh, cn has not been filed the fact that there is 
there not there is no filing being done that declaration needs to be attached in other attachments share is issued upon exercise of esops form esop filed in smf form esop has not been filed the same has to be uh, declared as part of other attachments that uh, a declaration would be required that it has not been filed a company secretary has to uh, certify that all relevant requirement as per various statutes have been complied with by the entity the certificate shall be in the prescribed format uh, prescribed uh, format which has been prescribed by rbi and is required irrespective of the nature of issue. whatever be the nature of issue be it amalgamation or reorganization or subscription to moa or conversion of convertible notes or esops uh, being issued in any of the scenario certificate from uh, company secretary is mandatory friends please be clear ca certificate would not be required it has to be a company secretary certificate the format has been given in the firm's uh, site itself firms sites itself final attachment ca certificate and other attachment the final attachment should be uploaded in the field provided in the particulars of issue tab all required documents should be consolidated and uploaded as single attachment what are the final attachment uh, order of documents in final attachment first a declaration by business user stating that the foreign investment reported is in, a, is in accordance with the regulations issued under fema so this declaration would be required a covering letter explaining the nature and type of transaction documents required in relation to the uh, nature of issue as we have mentioned in the previous slide declaration of manner of utilization of excess funds received as we have seen we need to confirm whether it would be refunded or it has already been refunded or it would be used against some permissible transaction cs certificate in the letterhead of cs copy of fcgpr initially file in case there are like a uh, subsequent call of uh, partly paid up shares so these are the attachments which are required in this manner so now we'll see uh, reasons for rejection of form fcgpr all generally all fcgpr are approved uh, but ad banks has to has the excess has the absolute discretion when it comes to processing of fcgpr so if it has been processed by a, uh, ad bank then your the form is approved or the filing has been approved since the documents that may be required are case specific any documents that may not be mandatory could still be asked by the ad bank and could be the reason for rejection it is imperative to maintain proper correspondence with ad bank to know the documents that would be required for reporting a particular transaction a thorough reading of the user manual provided in the firm's portal would be would be helpful in filing the form so there is a user manual also which is there in the firm's portal which will uh, reflect the the documents which are required or the the ad bank requirements common reason, uh, reasons for rejection FIRC and KYC are not in the RBA prescribed format, or name of remitter in FIRC and KYC are different, or serial number of FIRC mentioned in form is incorrect, constitution of entity wrongly mentioned, date of issue of instruments as per CS certificate is not matching with the date of issue mentioned in the form or in board resolution, date of remittance in FCGP are not matching with the date uh, mentioned in FIRC. these are like common reasons which we have seen in our practical uh, experiences when a form has been rejected a new form has to be filed with the required uh, documents so it is not like only rectifying the defect uh, a new form has to be in total uh, filed case study uh, so uh, friends please be uh, focused this is again important to re relevant case studies um, which we had encountered in recent past ABC Private Limited announces rights issue to its uh, existing shareholders. Mr. A, who is an existing shareholder, renou renounces its uh, right in favor of Mr. B, a foreign uh, foreigner residing in USA. So, Mr. A is a resident. Rights issue were uh, announced by ABC Private Limited. Mr. A said he doesn't want the rights issue. He gave or he renounced his rights to in favor of Mr. B, who is again a for foreigner. so when this renunciation happen automatically the entire transaction becomes uh, an fdi so in such a scenario whatever because mr b is a non resident this transaction would fall within the ambit of fema and hence uh, fcgpr filing would be mandatory while reporting the transaction in fcgpr the following documents would be required board resolution of indian company for announcing rights issue offer letter for rights issue 
renunciation letter from existing shareholder and acceptance letter from new shareholder in whose name the shares are renounced if existing shareholder is also a foreigner then rbi acknowledgement of initial scgpr all other documents that are specifically asked for in the forms in case of renunciation these are the mandatory details which are required in case of renunciation nature of issue is to be selected as other than as specified as issue under section 62 1a3 of companies act 2013 this is further issue of share capital so we need to select others in the nature of issue and mention issue under section 62 1a3 this is case study one friends uh, wherein like uh, the nature of issue was falling within the ambit of other issues case study 2 this is again important friends shares of indian company were issued to non residents mr a and mr b so both are non residents by way of sub subscription to moa so uh, on december 30 2019 there is no relationship between a and b so a is different b b is different both are non residents and the uh, the issue the shares were issued by subscription to moa bank account of the indian company was opened only in the month of may 2020 so just uh, focus on the dates friend uh, subscription to moa date is uh, december 2019 bank account has been opened in may 2020 payment for shares that is share capital money was received on may 20 2020 20th may 2020 mr b has also paid the consideration payable by mr a so in this scenario what happened friend mr b is a uh, a private limited company Uh, mr a was like out of uh, 10000 shares only two shares were allotted to mr a and the balance uh, 998 was allotted to uh, mr b so and, and both being non resident what it was thought like uh, as it is a petty amount uh, even though there was no relationship between mr a and b but uh, there was uh, some reference or some con uh, connect between a and b so mr b uh, Uh, transferred the nominal amount of 20 rupees um, uh, of mr a along with its uh, subscription money board resolution for allotment of shares was passed in the month of june 2020 fcgpr filed on july 15 2020 so friends uh, here as it is subscription to moa the date of allotment someone would say it is 2019 within one month the uh, shares are to be uh, and within one month the fcgpr form filing has to happen but in this scenario the board resolution yeah that is what is the importance of board resolution board resolution for allotment of shares was passed on june 20 2020 so this was confirmed with the ad bank that in this scenario what can be done they uh, uh, guided us that you pass a board resolution uh, within one month uh, of uh, receipt of money uh, that is 20th may 2020 pass a board resolution and from that day again uh, within uh, now one month you need to file fcgpr so may 20 we received the money 20th june again board resolution was passed and the last so accordingly the last filing date uh, or the due date for filing fcgpr was 20th july 2020 so this clarification was received from ad bank itself as per correspondence with ad bank the following documents were submitted while filing fcgpr firc and kyc of mr b so only initial filing when it happened we provided only firc and kyc of mr b in the prescribed format that is the company letter from mr a stating the reasons for remittance being made by mr b as it is a nominal amount and again it will involve uh, charges bank charges more than the amount of uh, subscription that's why mr b would make the payment on my behalf noc from mr b uh, nature of relationship between mr a was mentioned as business relationship so initially this form was initially rejected but what was the uh, feeding of details before the rejection these that nature of relationship between a and b was mentioned as business relationship kyc of mr a general kyc was submitted friends please be clear general kyc was submitted not kyc in the rbi prescribed format that is passport and eb uh, e bill documents uh, in uh, rba prescribed format that is other attachments uh, board resolution for allotment of shares copy of moa of investi certificate from company secretary in rba prescribed format so these were the documents which were uploaded form fcgpr was rejected there were reasons uh, date of allotment in board resolution not matching with the date in cs certificate so cs certificate was received mentioning the date of allotment as 31st that is 30th of december 2019 
so there was a rejection on this ground stating that the date of allotment in board resolution which is uh, board resolution was passed on 20th june 2020 so that date is not matching with the date in cs certificate which was 30th december 2019 kyc of investor of mr a was asked in rbi prescribed format so the the, the normal kyc that is passport and uh, eb bill which was provided that was not accepted actual relationship between investor and remitter so even the wordings like business relationship was not accepted so how the these uh, issues were rectified a fresh cs certificate was obtained with the date of allotment matching with the date of board resolution earlier the date of allotment considered was by cs was 30th december as i said uh, that and cs was also not wrong because uh, he uh, he used uh, the date as uh, as on date of subscription of MOA, which was 30th December 2019. So again, a revised uh, uh, CS certificate was received, mentioning the facts that uh, the bank account has been opened only in the month of May. The board resolution has been passed in the month of June. So the FCGPR filing due date is uh, uh, 20th July. That is one month from uh, the date of allotment, which is uh, date of passing of board, of board resolution, which is 20th June. KYC of investor was opened. So again, we approached the AD bank uh, of uh, the uh, of AD bank from where the amount was received from B. So as B had paid amount for himself uh, for for itself as well as for A, we approached AD bank and asked them we require a KYC. Even though Mr. A has not remitted, but there are issue of shares against A. Even though nominal amount, we require RBI uh, we require KYC in RBI prescribed format which was uh, accepted by ad bank and they gave us a kyc of specifically different kyc of mr a the relationship between mr a and b was mentioned as no relationship other than both parties being subscriber to moa so instead of business relationship we mentioned no relationship other than both parties being subscribers to moa this is the only common uh, connection between them thus uh, with this once the uh, the issues were or there were revisions done when we uploaded the <coughs> revised form of CGPR it, it got filed friends technical points uh, since the online session expires every 10 to 15 minutes it is important to save the form as draft every few minutes the form can even be submitted after, later if at all it is saved the reference number of drafts shall be noted so whenever you are saving uh, 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 the form as draft Two things. One is reference note uh, number should be noted. Second, the session expires in every 10 to 15 minutes. So you need to save the form uh, as draft every few minutes. The reset button is not to be clicked unless the entire form needs to be reset. It is suggested to fill the tabs in the same order as given in the form. So no uh, juggling the tabs or uh, going to the foreign investor details first and then the entity user and then the issue details. The 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 flow should be the same as, as what was mentioned in the slides. Submitted forms can be viewed subsequently using the reference number of form or by entering the date of filing. However, they cannot be changed after submission. So once it is submitted, we cannot change it. We have to wait for AD Bank to approve or reject. After rejection, we can do revisions in the form. The file size of attachment cannot exceed 1 MB. At the same time, while compressing the files in order to reduce size, the content of att attachment should be readable by the AD Bank. If not, this could be easily be a cause for rejection. So file size should not, one document size should not exceed one MB. But at the time, so while doing that or while compressing the files, we should ensure the content is legible. Uh, in the garb of uh, reducing the size, we should, uh, we should not compromise on the content. That can be a simple ground for rejection by the AD bank or the RBA. Late filing, non-filing of FCGPR, uh, what happened? What are the consequences? Um, as I mentioned, friends, the, the amount imposed can be up to three times the amount involved in the contravention. However, the actual input, there would be some uh, uh, leeway given. So it can go up to three times, but if there are genuine reasons uh, or if there are uh, there were practical difficulties for not doing that, uh, in such a scenario, RBI takes or gives some cushion and the amount of penalty is reduced rago as i said it depends on a lot of uh, uh, reasons as to why there was a delay what is the amount involved whether it was a 
practical difficulty, genuine reason, or it was just a, a compliance lapse from the entity. A lot of factors uh, come into picture while uh, leaving this penalty. Once the form is approved, an acknowledgement letter is received from RBI confirming the approval. So these were some of the talks on uh, the form FCGPR, more so on the practical aspect as to what needs to be filled in, how it needs to be filled in, what are the documents required, uh, what happens in case uh, there is a rejection of form and how that needs to be rectified in case of any doubts, would be happy to answer.